up next for Peace and Peace. Courtney, your yoga teacher. I'm so glad you're here today. Welcome to Easy Mornings. So today for practice, um, I want us to do meditation as a focus for ease. And you might have heard me say this a couple times if you've been tuning in, but yoga philosophy says that when we lean into the deep truths of ourselves, that we can recognize and see the shared humanity of all. So we're gonna go inside and hopefully when we leave our meditation today, we feel a little bit more present on the outside. So I welcome you to find a comfortable seat uh, wherever you are. It could be up in a chair, you could be seated on the earth. If you are seated on the earth, I, I recommend sitting up on something. So maybe a pillow or a blanket. And then before we start, we're just gonna do two short exercises of meditation. And I just wanna talk about what meditation isn't. So meditation isn't that we're clearing our mind of thoughts and we're just sitting in this state of bliss and ease. If that happens, great, awesome. But for most of us, um, our thoughts can be a little bit um, scary or um, intense. So what I'm gonna ask you to do today in meditation is to be willing, just for a couple of minutes, to lean in to just witnessing the thoughts, to watching yourself think, and we'll see how it goes together. So let's find our seat. So sitting up on something, place your palms wherever they are most comfortable, and then go ahead and close your eyes and just commit for these next couple minutes to try to go inside. So first, just noticing your body and space, really allow the body to ground down, Allow your shoulders to move away from your ears. Allow your jaw to soften. And then just starting to bring in the awareness of breath. So just noticing yourself breathing. And then just notice where your mind is right now. So if the mind is in a future thought or maybe your mind is wrapped up in just where you were, See if you can bring your mind to just being here for a couple minutes. And then we'll just start by witnessing the thoughts. So almost like your thoughts were little clouds going across the sky of your mind. Just notice, watch them pass. here, we're going to give our mind a focus. So I want you to use your sense of sound to keep drawing you back to the moment. So getting really curious about the sounds around you. So I'm in the park. I'm in our beautiful park. I'm hearing little dings, little sounds of kids walking by. I'm gonna use those sounds to keep reminding me to be present in the moment. So what do you hear in your space right now? Really tune in. Maybe tuning in so much that you start to hear what's outside your space. Can you hear cars on the street, sirens, planes? And can you use that instead of an annoyance to draw you into this moment, almost like a little meditation bell? And then from here, keeping your eyes closed or soft gaze at the floor, place both hands on your heart put a little gentle pressure so that you can actually feel the beat of your own heart. Allow that connection to your heartbeat to draw you into your body. 
maybe a little sense of gratitude for your healthy body. And then just tuning into whatever is in the heart right now. So whatever feeling is present, whether it's a feeling you want to be experiencing or not, can you allow space and room to feel into that heart? Maybe even recognizing that that feeling that you're experiencing is probably a feeling that a lot of other people are feeling. Maybe feeling your connection to all people's hearts right now. Take one more deep, full, committed breath into your own heart. Maybe exhale for wellness of all people. Go ahead and flutter your eyes open, draw your hands in a gesture of prayer at your heart, bow your chin into your chest. The light in me acknowledges the light in all of you. Namaste. truck is based out of LA but uh, was definitely inspired by Louisiana style cooking uh, and um, we've been around in the truck for three years now and we pretty much do occasion occasion style menu um, that's inspired by Louisiana again but based out of California my parents are from Louisiana but I grew up here but always went back and, and loved the food and wanted to have it in LA. And I want people to, you know, people to have it out here, so. I want them to take away uh, the, the, the fact that we put a lot of love into our food and uh, passion and uh, because we put so much passion it's 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 what we want you know we want to see that that customer and that's what we you know satisfied we want to see that customer
I think parks are are very uh, very important to like family because um, to, my history is me and my family we used to go to parks like every holiday and uh, celebrate different holidays and uh, we used to barbecue and a lot of my you know cooking came from that as well so yeah it's 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 very important we still go to this you know day for holidays so i think parks are really important brings families together hi everyone i'm chef c from chef c's smoking pot and you're watching grand park easy mornings Let me tell you about the experience of Head Wraps in the Park at Grand Park. First of all, when you walk in, the fountain sets the tone for the day. It's relaxing, it's peaceful, um, it's just a great entry to the event. Head Wraps in the Park is the event that includes vendors, art, music. Um, it's such a joyous venue to be at for the day. So the park is um, very spacious. It, it allows for us to, um, you know, curate a beautiful experience for our attendees. The experience is just one, then the pink furniture. The pink furniture really adds this burst of color, which is a big part of our brand. It's all about culture, col a colorful day, a colorful life. So Head Wraps in the Park is a, is a event where you can come and learn about the culture of Head Wraps. It's a place where small businesses and entrepreneurs showcase their collections. So you can find really curated special um, collections to um, purchase and, and knowing that you're really supporting a small business. A lot of these people don't have venues or places where they can sell. So we take our time to really make sure we're picking the best um, entrepreneurs to be a part of this day. Um, we have workshops, we have head wrap workshops, we have where you learn about the history of head wraps. We have a kids section. So it's a family oriented event where everyone can come out and enjoy the park um, with head wraps in the park. So um, we have food, we have music, we have art. Um, we really try to make sure we cover all aspects of entertainment. So when you come, you wanna stay for the whole day, not just for the park, but for the event. So it's like a great um, collaboration um, to come out and just, just prepare to spend the whole day, lay out, sit out, eat, drink, learn. Um, and, and meet new friends and just have fun and, um, and, and just really just embrace um, downtown LA for the beautiful um, trees and flowers and the music, the art, it's, it's, it's a perfect day to come out. For Head Wraps in the Park, um, for a lot of the people that come, they're coming from all different types of communities and some of them are coming from communities that don't have parks. So what I hear from a lot of the attendees that come, first of all, they're like, wow, this is breathtaking. And to me, it makes a great deal the environment that you are inviting people to come to. And so when people walk in, it's like, wow, this is so beautiful. Like it's, it's the fountain, how green everything is, how well kept, how safe, the security, the, um, the staff, how welcoming it feels. And those are things I hear over and over. And so it's a big, part of the experience um, that Head Wraps in the Park provides through Grand Park. So um, it's, it's just a joy. That's a, a symbol of a safe space. When someone you come and, and you put a smile on someone's face and they walk away like, wow, that was such a great experience. Like everything, like not just one thing or that, the whole package was a great experience. Yes, it's so it's very important to, for someone to come and see, first of all, diversity. Like everyone's welcome here and we're all gonna like come together for a day and celebrate and learn and learn about each other's culture and, and learn like, okay, why, why are you wearing a hat wrap? And is it okay to wear a hat wrap? And so for me, it's very important for us to embrace each other and learn and teach with an open mind 
and just having a space that we can come and call our own for today. It's like, this is our space. We're coming together to, to learn from one another and celebrate and enjoy. And to me, that's so very important, especially now, like is to come in peace and with an open mind and, and just be able to listen and learn and walk away with some knowledge. Walking away with something that you didn't know, coming to an event where you think, oh, I'm gonna come and dance and have a good time, but walking away with a piece of information where you can go and be a better person and also just look at someone else and, and admire, you know, admire their culture. Pet Raps in the Park, as far as um, well-being, is a place I feel for self-care. You know, we're here to have a good time, and so it's very important to be somewhere where the energy is flowing, where it's positive, and everyone is uplifted, and we're all just having a good time. And that's a part of our self-esteem, our confidence, and, and just being around good energy. The venue, the people, the atmosphere, it's its all of, it's all of, it, it, we walk away feeling better about ourselves. So I feel like self-care has taken a whole different meaning and respect and so many more people are, are, are leaning into it because it's the way that we're gonna get through this and we're gonna be stronger, especially as women, because we're already, already strong, already taking on a lot of work, um, being a mom, um, being an entrepreneur, but this, I feel like we're just really gonna, it's just gonna make us stronger. We're becoming stronger because we're getting knocked down, we're getting back up, getting knocked down, getting back up. And we do do that through self-care. Hi, I'm Karina, I'm from Las Fotos Project, and I've been a part of them for about two semesters. In my time, I've learned how to express myself through photography. Having been a part of Las Fotos Project has not only offered various opportunities for me, but also given me a chance to be emotionally supported and feel welcomed and included. My name is Gabby, I've been a mentor with Las Fotos Project for three years now. And in my time uh, working with a big group of teenage girls, it's been so amazing to see them learn about themselves and each other through the practice of photography. And Las Fotos does such a great job of creating a safe, comfortable space that even I have grown a lot as an artist. And today we'll be talking about point of view. So point of view is just how you look at things. And everybody can take a regular picture of what your eyes see straight forward, but you can make it interesting by changing your point of view, taking a walk in someone else's shoes. This, you can apply it to anywhere, whether you think your subject is kind of boring and you want to like make it more interesting, you can change the angle, your perspective, you can make a flower seem like a skyscraper, or you can make a little tiny house seem <laughs> even more bigger. Yeah, I do that with my own apartment sometimes. Just like visually pretend. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger. <laughs> Yeah, so we started off with a flower and thought you can look at it straightforward, but you can also look at it from beneath in a worm's eye view, or you can take it from above in a bird's eye view and make completely different images out of the same thing. 
it creates a different feeling and tone to it. Like mm -hmm. when you compare the pictures, it's, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So that's how one person yeah. can come to the park and you can come up with yeah. so many different pictures than your friend got. One angle changes everything. Last Photos Project is a community-based nonprofit organization that inspires teenage girls through photography, mentorship, and self-expression. Offering year-round programming, we provide girls with access to professional cameras, quality instruction, and workshops that encourage them to explore their identity, build leadership skills, and advocacy skills, and strengthen their social and emotional well-being. So you can get involved with Last Photos Project as a student, volunteer, mentor, host or teaching artists. Students can sign up for classes online. Volunteers and mentors can sign up to support our students in the same way. And if you're an artist who wants to teach your own personal brand of photography, reach out. We would love to offer a class with your name on it. And lastly, if you want to host a workshop or don't want to commit to a full class, you can also reach out to do something on our Instagram, lasphotosproject.org. My name is Jose Richard, and today we are here at Grand Park for Grand Park's Easy Mornings, and you're about to watch a little bit of a piece called Callejera. Now, Callejera is a series of stories that tell a bigger story of space and identity. You'll see me do a poem about my gender pronouns called Quienes Son. They explain the ways that I embody everything of who I am all in once. Then I'll sing a song for you, a cover of one of my favorite artists named Natalia Lafourcade, shout out to her, called Solo Prohibido, I Am the Forbidden One. A lot of my story has been about being forbidden, whether it's through my identities, as a femme, as someone from the hood. And then we'll immerse ourselves in a splash pad where you'll get to see me be free to dancing to mi libertad. And lastly, we'll come back here and you'll hear Callejera, the final piece that explains how all of these stories come together to create a new gender. Callejera, someone who embodies coming from the hood, South Central, and being a femme because those two things live in one body. I hope you enjoy this performance. Soy afeminado, soy amanerado, I am femboy. My body has been conditioned to be father, but my spirit yearns for mother. Am I an orphan child? Recently, I've been asked a lot about my gender pronouns, and I am not offended. On the contrary, I celebrate this questioning. There's something about this body, something about these caderas. This is what they meant when they said, boy, you switch and walk like a girl. Something about this gender paradigm is just not working for you. My name is Jose Richard Aviles and my preferred gender pronouns are he, they, them, ella y desmadrosa. And yes, in Spanish, we have a word for ratchet and it's desmadrosa. First, let's start with he. He is the one that was conditioned to ride the bus at two o'clock in the morning. Though a fairy, he is still a man. He is the one that had to learn to exert his masculinity by playing with trucks, building blocks, doing a tune-up and a smog check. And yes, you best believe she knows how to change a tire. He is the one that was conditioned to speak for even being at Grand Park is a manifestation of my male privilege. And then there's they. But see, now they are interesting. They function like the child who is anxious to see who hides behind the peekaboo. They are the ones that walk with me into the bathroom when other men walk into the bathroom and question the bathroom they're in. You should see their faces. They see a chongo and an earring and say, who are they at the urinal? They are the ones that walk with me for they remind me that the street was my first stage. They are the ones that try to decipher the fine line between compliment or the next victim of toxic masculinity. They are the ones that remind me to be shamelessly free. And then there's Ella. Ella is yas. Ella is the sweetness of a skirt that glides across the ocean. Ella wears heels to remind herself that she is heard. Ella derrama lágrimas, she cries at night and she doesn't know why, but the bitterness of her tears are as true as her lonely heartbeat. Ella me enseñó coraje, valor, strength, and courage. Ella es mi madre, she is my mother. 
I use Aya because my mother needs affirmations more than I do. And then there's this madrosa. This madrosa cackles. This madrosa recognizes the resiliency of joy because for all of you, this madrosa should not exist. But this madrosa parties. This madrosa disrupts. Y después de las diez, no sean cochinos. See, this madrosa, she is not tonight's lay. He is the fantasy you will never have. They are Sunday service, the sacrament of your faith. For within this madrosa lives mother, daughter, and the damnation of your masculinity. And yes, masculinity lives in all sexualities, the difference between gay and queer. So the next time, remember my name, Jose Richard Aviles, aunque les cueste, aunque les arden, aunque tengan coraje y aunque tengan miedo, let them feel my anger, let them not understand who the... My name is Jose Richard Aviles, and my birthright is he, they, them, ella y desmadrosa. This piece was written at three o'clock in the morning in the dark corner of my room. That moment when there isn't a think piece long enough to explain your identity, when there aren't enough characters to suffice your hunger. Soy el pecado que te dio Nueva ilusión en el amor Soy lo prohibido Soy el pecado que te dio Nueva ilusión en el amor Soy lo prohibido Soy esa fiebre de tu piel Que te domina sin querer Soy tu castigo Porque en tu falsa intimidad y en cada abrazo que le das, sueñas conmigo.
Callejeras recognized the resiliency in strutting. Callejeras traded their pink, their heels for pink J's, and you best believe they got them at the Slauson Swap Meet. Callejeras never hid razors un in their hair, for we hid them underneath our tongue for every ch ch a mami. Well then, fairy, they traded it for ike a la. This is dedicated to you, Callejera. This is dedicated to the Callejera who stood at the intersection of Western and Adams with the bullhorn in hand and a rainbow flag in the other. For this Callejera knows that her queerness is defiance, proclamations of pavement. This is dedicated to the Callejera who stood at the intersection of Vernon and Vermont from Patojos Corriendo Sin Lentes to Panaderias. I still go buy bread for them so they stay afloat. This is dedicated to you, Callejera, for the color of, the, of your skin reflects the courage of the matriarchs that brought you here. Your earrings hang like dangling jacarandas in the month of May. Your curls hide the secrets that Abuela whispered at night. They are something you are not free and unafraid to be seen. You, Callejera, recognize the resiliency in malt liquor. You understand the politics of brown bags and recognize that cigarettes are currency. You, Callejera, fell asleep to helicopter lullabies because where we come from, surveillance is normalized. This is dedicated to you, Callejera. They will, you will plant seeds on the ground and they will be waiting for flowers, but girl, you're about to sprout a forest. My name is Jose Richard Aviles, but let my name be forgotten. Let my name fly with the wind. Let my name be gone. I am not interested in the accolades of the flesh. I am interested in the healing of soil. For Callejera is the birth of a new pronoun. Callejera is the relationship between space and body. I would not be body without soil. I would not be smile without frown. I would not be fist without fight. I would not be earring without caution. This is dedicated to you, Callejera. This is dedicated to my hood. This is dedicated to South Central. Buenos dias. Welcome to Color Healing Sesh with Girl Museum Day at Grand Park's Evening Mornings. My name is Diane Linquist, founder of Girl Museum Day. For those interested in learning what we do, my Girl Museum Day team will be dropping links to our website and social media. Check us out and give us a follow. We'll be taking the next 20 minutes to heal together through coloring. This morning, we're using coloring shade dog on a pink bench. Grand Park is a place for everyone. That includes our furry friends, dogs. You can follow the hashtag dogs of Grand Park where Grand Park reposts all of their furry friends who come to visit the park. Like this beauty, which we are going to nickname Miss Puff. Now, let's color Miss Puff. Coloring is a way to step back from what's going on around us and find calmness within. This practice has a meditative power and ability to facilitate tranquility and peace within ourselves. As we select the colors and form a plan in how to tackle a coloring sheet, 
we begin to fully engage in this practice. Already, my thoughts are drifting. I'm digging the relaxing music and focusing. Zoning in just my mind and hands. Can you feel it? By taking time to join us, you are connected with everyone who is coloring along or watching us color. That energy can help us to be present and still. To me, coloring is a way to disconnect and enjoy the process of creating without any judgment. Coloring isn't about making it perfect. It's about enjoying yourself. I encourage you all, if this is working for you, to continue with this practice.
For Miss Puff, I decided that I should go with a beige and surround her with pink.
For the background, we're going to keep it pink and make the rest blue to reference the sky. Please share with us your coloring sheets by tagging us at Girl Museum Day at Grand Park underscore LA and hashtag Grand Park Easy Mornings. We'll be reposting your coloring sheets on social media. This completes our sesh. Thank you for joining us for the past four Saturdays. We hope it's been a playful, relaxing, easy morning. Bye. My family, we used to go to parks like every holiday and uh, celebrate different holidays. And uh, we used to barbecue. And a lot of my, you know, cooking came from that as well. When I think about public spaces, I kind of think of an area to come to distress. And it helps your mental health a lot, getting away from your own environment and having a place that's safe where you can come with your friends and family and have fun. and kind of escape that um, 
bad or disheartening energy that's happening right now, especially because of COVID. Um, just being here at the park kind of grounds me and kind of reminds me that it's okay. And we just feel like this sort of community looking at everyone else who feels that exact same way. It's not just us. The park brings me peace. I like to lay out a blanket, have a cute picnic basket, and just, a, just lay out a whole buffet, of cheese, crackers, sausage, and a nice book and just lay and relax and, and, and just be at peace. It's where I go to, to do my business plans where I go to just, just reflect and, and it, it, I find peace in a park. So that's kind of like how I use it as an adult now. Callejeras have been told that we shouldn't reclaim space, but we say no to that. Think of a place, a public space that brings you joy. How do you reclaim space? What are the things that bring you joy? But it's not that joy, you know, that faux joy, the one that's very surface. It's that one that brings smiles, de, de oreja oreja, like we say in Spanish, from ear to ear. So a perk, what it means to me is, um, I think of it in, in kind of two ways. I think of a park as sort of like a big meditation room. So sometimes I love coming to a public green space just to, you know, feel my feet on the earth, to feel a breeze on my skin, to feel the sun, um, maybe hear some sirens here and there. Um, but it is a really nice way to remind me of kind of my greater place in the world, um, to feel, you know, nature, to, um, you know, experience like trees and beauty. And um, that's really always very good for my soul to just kind of feel my feet on the earth. Um, I'm a fellow downtowner, so I really have great appreciation, especially for Grand Park, um, to give me access to some green space. Yeah, I really appreciate being able to come out and see that I'm not the only one on this earth, that I'm part of a community. I think it helps us build compassion for one another once we really realize like, oh, we're all in this together. I visually see you, I care for you, and I'm gonna do my best to build a good community for us. Mm -hmm.